microtransactions. Did I get your attention, guys? Because today is the time for some epic gaming moments for video games that I barely have time to play because I waste all of my time making YouTube videos. Today, we're going to be talking about gaming, but specifically gaming on Linux. I am making this video because I have gotten so many comments about people asking me all about how can I play my video games on Linux, but it's not just the comments. I've gotten questions from at least four people now that I know in real life about how to play video games on Linux or sometimes how to play video games on my Steam Deck. How do you do it? How does it work? I'm going to try to answer all of that, as well as how we even got here to begin with. You're terrible at this. I know. I hate video games. Windows has an iron grip over the PC gaming market. No matter what hardware is popular or what consoles are out at the time, Windows controls everything. And this dominance that Microsoft holds over the industry is something that folks at Valve have been fearful of since the dark ages of the Windows 8 era. That Microsoft would dare to utilize their store, or as one would argue today, their Xbox platform as a way to bump off their competition and rope people into subscription services. And while Microsoft has taken the position of being a benevolent dictator, offering many of their games on third-party platforms like Steam and GOG and Epic Games, Valve has been cautiously moving away from Windows and towards Linux because they're afraid that while Microsoft might be that benevolent dictator, they might not be for very long and experience a change of heart sometime in the future. And this actually became the bones to what became Steam OS, which was originally first based off of Debian, probably for copyright reasons. Valve began to make a big push to invite their developers to make native games for Linux, and they would also pre-install SteamOS on Steam machines, which people could use to remote play, and it's kind of the same way you'd use a game console. But the Steam machines failed to take off, and Valve realized they needed to take a different pivot if they were going to make their Linux distribution and an alternative to Windows succeed in the market. There are lots of games that are native for Linux, meaning they were built specifically for Linux, but the Linux games that were a result of this native port push Valve made during the Steam Machine era, like the Tomb Raider reboot or the Grim Fandango, do not work at all today. Because if you go onto the store pages and start reading those system requirements, they ask for really old versions of Ubuntu and look for really ancient libraries and dependencies that nobody should be using. And this is the biggest conundrum Valve faced, and not just Valve, but gaming developers faced when porting their games to work for Linux. And this porting process was the real impetus for the creation of Valve's Proton. For years, a program known as Wine, which is still honestly a really bad recursive acronym, dominated the scene with getting Windows programs to run on Mac and Linux. And while it was possible to run Windows games on Wine on Mac and Linux, Valve chose to fork Wine and make some of their custom changes designed to optimize Wine towards gaming and gaming dependencies. Today, Valve continues to innovate in the Linux gaming space, creating cool new tools, contracting out new developers, and maintaining the Steam Deck, which gives them first-hand experience to what platform developers have to experience when using programs on Linux and through Wine. And Valve's Proton is the new heart of playing games on Linux. And because I get questions all the time, people ask me things like, oh, what's a gaming distribution you recommend? How do you play games on Linux? What does this actually look like? Can I play my games if I have a potato computer? And I'm just going to give you some disclaimers because I, this is, I want to show you and be transparent how I tested everything. And I just want to tell you that this is what my experience is, okay? I don't have a, the top of the line PC of this generation, but I have one of the best PCs of the last generation. I can stomach some of the most graphically intense games today, but without some of the modern amenities you would expect with current graphics cards, things like ray tracing, 
DLSS, some of that AI upscaling and whatnot that people use. Uh, my computer is also the testbed of computer of the last generation, and many popular games that you might have heard of were tested using my computer. And this process may have also been the result of games work better for me because developers often test things on a computer rig similar to mine first, or at least they used to. But let's be honest, you guys are probably playing games that are sometimes older, not necessarily even current titles. And this goes without saying too that because my computer is really common, I also use the NVIDIA proprietary driver because despite what I said earlier, NVIDIA is pretty much the de facto standard of the bleeding edge features of graphics cards today. And as much flack as I and the ire of many others give towards NVIDIA, NVIDIA works mostly fine on Linux as long as you get it working to begin with. Also, each game I tested here, I tested using packages and flat packs. And as long as your distribution supports flat packs in some degree or fashion and provides Flat Hub, you can download each one of the programs I'm about to mention through Flat Pack or through your software store like GNOME Software, KDE's Discover, or Pomac. And the reason why I chose to do everything in Flat Pack is because we need to be moving to Flat Pack because these programs have dependence on 32-bit libraries, libraries that are often a lot older and based off of the old Win32K framework. And the reason for this is because Microsoft's DirectX, which is a proprietary standard which runs all of gaming, requires 32-bit code to run. And as a result, we need to have 32-bit libraries installed natively onto our system. But how do you avoid this? You use Flatpak, which has the ability to emulate multiple architectures when you enable the multi-arch permission. And this allows you to play your video games with your 32-bit libraries safely sandboxed away from your host system. Because aside from these games, the odds are you will never need to run or use this 32 32-bit code in your day-to-day -day life when 64-bit has been the standard for over a decade now. And speaking of standards, I gamed completely using Wayland. Wayland isn't only the future of the secure Linux desktop, but it's also the home to many of the upcoming features that those gamers might want. Things like HDR, high refresh rate monitors. But if you use something like X11, because I know someone's gonna say to me, well, I use X11 because I need X thing to work. <laughs> uh, you may not ever see these features get implemented. That being said, because Wine isn't running natively on Wayland, the performance overhead of running Windows games through Wine, which is a translation layer which brings it to the Linux kernel calls, to non-native X Windows in Wayland through X Wayland, which is a translation layer which turns X Windows into Wayland, there's probably some sort of really minor performance difference somewhere, and there's probably an appreciable difference between Wayland and X11, but I played everything using Wayland because that is what I believe everyone should be using. Now that we've got that all the way, let's get all of our games to work. And of course, that brings us into Steam. To get some games to work, Valve actually has some officially supported titles and also some ones that have been tested and working on the Steam Deck. And you might see a little Steam Deck ready icon or anything that's in Valve's official list of games that work. With some games that aren't officially supported, you'll need to make sure that Valve's Steam Play compatibility isn't just enabled for the official titles, but for all titles. Now, I, the reason I say almost every game is because sometimes some games don't work right using the stock builds of Proton or even the experimental builds. Instead, what we're going to need to do is we need to turn to custom wine builds. Now, there are mo real, a lot of custom wine builds out there, but the most popular one is Proton GE, or the GE being Glorious Egg Roll, a Red Hat employee who has faithfully updated it for specific and extreme game compatibility and bug fixes. Having a custom version of Proton isn't necessarily difficult to install as long as you know where to look. But the issue with maintaining a custom version of Proton is remembering to update it. This is where Proton Up comes in. Proton Up is a GUI which allows you to update each version of Wine or Proton that you have installed and keeps them up to date through a GUI tool and makes the management of keeping all these versions of Wine together a lot easier. 
because to take the burden off of users, Proton Op doesn't just integrate into Steam, there are multiple other launchers which take advantage of the features like Proton to ease up the process of running games on Linux. Because remember guys, not every game is on Steam. So this is where you use something like the Heroic Launcher. The Heroic Launcher is a front-end launcher for Epic Games and GOG. Now this isn't to say that Epic Games doesn't allow their launcher to work on Linux, because it totally does, but it breaks all the time when you update it, and it spies on all of your Steam games. If you want to use Epic Games, not have to deal with their analytics or their awful front-ends, because yes, their program collects all of that, you can use Heroic to install all of your Epic games. They also let you install GOG games because Heroic provides a front end for both Epic games and GOG and has a series of scripts built around downloading your games through Epic and GOG's APIs as long as you're logged in. And this allows you to be like me where you can install lots of games and there's lots of great options you can go to configure everything too. And if you wanna play some more niche indie games, especially those not found on major platforms, Games like IF's SCL, Facade, or League of Legends, Lutris might be your best bet. Lutris is a series of community compiled installers of people who have attempted to get various games working on Linux. Lutris also has some more niche features that the other launchers like Steam and Heroic don't have. For example, Lutris lets you limit the amount of CPU cores that a program is allowed to query at one time, and it also has more fine-grained control over what programs are allowed to access. And Lutris might not be the perfect solution, but it's definitely a great one because it has survived the test of time for many years. And as someone who has used Lutris for seven years now, uh, I have consistently always been impressed every time I always see something working. Lut While Lutris is great and all, I think people are starting to develop an approach that would work better in a sandbox environment, and this is where Bottles comes in. The latest innovation to gaming on Linux is Bottles, which allows a more simple point-and-click solution to get everything all running in one go. Bottles is actually really good at managing launchers, and this is actually a problem that Lutris comes across, because when you install multiple Ubisoft games, for example, you're actually installing multiple copies of things like Uplay, or Battle.net, or Origin, every single time you want to install a game from a different provider because they're all using different prefixes. Now I know you could manually install it in a different prefix, but that can often mess up installations, which is why people use separate folders for each game launcher. Uh, Bottles, on the other hand, while it might be more limited than Lutris because it's newer, chooses to take an approach by allowing you to run the launchers directly themselves in a more gaming-optimized environment, which is thoroughly tested to work with most games. And as long as you know how to configure it, kind of like the way that uh, people who play retro video games configure things like DOSBox or RetroArch, uh, it's kind of similar to that. And the, there's lots of places online which actually document these things because we have things that might not work out of the box, but you should be prepared to hack your games because at the end of the day, gaming on Linux is basically a hack. Because the first problem is you might not be able to play your games at all. And oftentimes you might not be able to play your games at all either because it doesn't work out of the box, you've tried wine, Lutris, bottles, it's not working, what's going on? Because on the topic of getting these programs to work, we get into the complication of multiplayer games. All of these companies like Roblox and Destiny 2 that have denied support are actually a product of a fear which exists within these companies, which the fear is that the Linux gamers are going to get their grubby flippers and cheat on their video games. And as a result, they block Linux players from being able to play multiplayer games. And multiplayer games is going to be the next battle fought over on Linux. Games like Warframe and Fall Guys, for example. Warframe, multiplayer game, yes, Warframe lets you play with other people, but you just don't fight them. They just happen to be running around in the background, but the game works just fine. And with the case of Fall Guys, you need to go through all of this extra work because when you first boot up the game, the game will tell you easy anti-cheat doesn't work. But if you follow a YouTube video from this guy, which I had to do because every instruction on ProtonDB was wrong and on Steam was wrong, in order to download Easy Anti-Cheat, 
you have to go into Heroic and check a box. And then after you do that, you need to go and install the Epic Games Overlay. <laughs> Otherwise, the game is going to continuously kick you out. And then once I did all of that, I was able to open the game and play the game for about an hour and even won my first match. So clearly, I was able to play this game just fine. But this doesn't mean that everything's all red and roses. Now that you've got your anti-cheat sorted out, you've learned all of your silly compatibility programs and layers, because the last thing you might need to do is prepare to look up literal cheat codes, or as I call them, and as many people call them, environment variables and launch commands. These are specific commit variables which are only needed for specific games because while people might willy-nilly paste these into every single game, these might often cause compatibility issues, which is why they aren't enabled by default in things like Proton or Wine. And you can also add extra arguments in Steam, Heroic, Lutris, Bottles, and while they might be a little more obscure, if you go onto the interwebs and you look up what people do, especially on ProtonDB, people often document their experience with what works and what doesn't. For In my case, for example, I actually have played Arkham Knight, and Arkham Knight requires the visibility of your NVIDIA GPU and access to the NVIDIA APIs, and then the game will work great, as long as you don't use any of the special overpowered CPU burning NVIDIA effects. And provided you do this, the game works great. And this also goes into things like League of Legends, because to get League of Legends to work, you need to follow the obscure advice of a subreddit. Yes, I am not kidding. You need to follow the advice of a subreddit. At once you install the thing through Lutris or whatever, just so you can play the game. That is the state of the world we live in. But once you've got all this figured out, you've got your Steam, you've got your Heroic, you've got Lutris, Bottles, Launch Commands and Variables, and your Anti-Cheat working, you have now gotten the framework ready to play games on Linux. And I just want to leave this as a starting point. I know I did not go through all this in detail because frankly, there is way too much to cover and I'm going to get way too many questions about why does X game not work? How come I can't play uh, Morrowind? Well, it's because you need to install a third party launcher from Debian's repos, man. I don't know what to tell you. Well, that's all for today, and I'm going to leave it at that. So if you liked this video, why don't you go like this video? Like this video. If you would like to see more epic gaming moments. And subscribe if you view yourself as an epic gamer who leeches off the free games of the Epic Game Store. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys later. Have a great rest of your week.